What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Today we're going to do a quick overview of my functional snorkel intake that we've built for my H2 Hummer. Now today we're just going to do a quick overview of a few things that I need to tackle before we bolt everything on. However, we've already had it on the truck. We've already been driving it around and it's really, really good. It's functioning super well. Now, if you're interested in the preliminary process, kind of me figuring out what I need to do and the few problems I have to tackle, click this video right here. That's just a quick overview of everything we did up to this point. So now we're gonna jump into a few things that I need to tackle today before we can get everything bolted down and looking clean. All right, excuse the mess, but we will run over here and just take a look. Now, if you watched that last video, you'll know the major problem that I was trying to tackle in that last video was you can see our water neck right here. Now that water neck was right in line of our pipe. I wanted to have a perfect 90 degree pipe running straight to the passenger side of the car and then up where our cuts were. And that just really wasn't gonna work out. I talked to several of my friends. We looked at lots of different ideas and every single solution required us messing with the water pump and the water neck. And honestly, that's really not a big deal for us, but it does create another area that could potentially just fell down the line. And so what I've done, I've bought a 60 degree banked pipe to get us over that coolant hose and that water neck. And so we have a lot of clearance now. And that was honestly the only problem that we were facing. So yesterday I took the truck out to Jeff's shop and we welded up the few brackets and things that I had to make to hold everything really securely. Drove it around all day yesterday and it's really, really happy. I was gonna take everything and get it powder coated, but my buddy that does all of my powder coating is like six weeks out. It's a good problem for him. It's a really bad problem for me. So I've gone ahead and just painted everything black for now. Whenever he gets a free day, I will take everything off, take it to him, let it get powder coated because the paint's just gonna get scratched and beat up. And so while the paint has been drying, I've been coming up with ways to make the whole install a lot cleaner and to improve the truck in general. So real quickly, if you haven't seen that first video, this is some of the stuff that we've had to cut to get this pipe to run from the throttle body up the side of the fender and actually come up to a reasonable position here on top of the cowl. You can see a lot of the grinding and cutting and things that we've done here. Now I've tried to smooth everything out and make it look as nice as possible. But one of the problems I've been having with my truck is right here. And excuse me if you saw that last video, I accidentally called this the cabin air filter. I wasn't sure what I was looking at right as soon as I pulled it off. This is actually the blower motor. And this port right here is for pulling ambient air from outside of the vehicle. There is a blend door for the recirculation mode that will actually fold up and seal this off and put your truck into recirculation mode. And here on my truck, it's been malfunctioning. That blend door has never actually worked. And so one of the things I wanted to do is put the Hummer into permanent recirculation mode. That's one of the mods that's been done to my Lotus. It has a terrible cooling system. So one of the things that's been done prior to my ownership was the front air intake mods for the ambient air have been blocked off. And so the Lotus is in permanent recirculation mode and it helps a lot with the dust around here. We have really, really fine dust. And of course it really improves upon on the air conditioning and the AC temp inside the vehicle. So that's something I've been wanting to do the truck today. So one of the mods we're going to do while we're waiting for that paint to dry is we're going to seal off that entire ambient air duct right there and just remove the top of the blend door. And that's gonna put the truck in permanent recirculation mode. So there's no chance of dust or water ever getting into that blower motor again. One of the really, really common problems on the H2 is leaks coming in through that door into the floorboard, and just getting the blower motor wet. So we're gonna seal all that off before final assembly. So aside from that, I'll show you a few of the things that we've done since that last video. Here's our pipes that we've made for the snorkel. This is our canister air filter from Spectre. This is just a little canister air filter. A lot of people use these for snorkels and custom intakes and it works really, really well. We have two pipes right here. This is our intake pipe that's inside the truck and you can see that we've made a bracket right here for that pipe. This is the pipe that actually connects to this one and then leads 
outside of the truck and so this is actually on the outside of the truck we really only have about this last little section here that sticks up outside of the truck it's not incredibly tall but i didn't want it incredibly tall either so you can see a couple of the custom brackets that we made here it didn't take very much at all to get the entire intake stable and really really secure there's enough play i've left in it for a little bit of engine movement but it's as secure as it should be and i think it's going to work out really really well so what i have right here is just some scrap flashing this is typically used in roofing air conditioning systems and things like that it's very very malleable and so we're going to cut a few pieces of that to get all that covered up and sealed we'll paint all of that black it's not going to look perfect it's definitely going to look better than what was there from the factory with a whole bunch of caulk and glue and stuff left alone so real quick i'm just going to cut a few pieces of this we'll get it mounted covering that exterior blend door and once that's mounted and painted i will assemble the rest of the snorkel and i'll show y'all what that looks like so this video is not going to have uh much if any how to's i figured you probably got enough of that in the last video and if you're here you're probably here specifically to see our snorkel and how it works but real quickly if you are here just to see a little bit of what we're doing here is a design of the original blend door shape it's uh not quite right it's just a little bit off but it doesn't matter because we're just going to lay this over our ambient blend door here i'm going to seal it down i'll scuff everything up and paint it it's not going to be pretty but nobody will ever see it i'll get this painted we'll pick back up after that then i'll get everything routed and we'll show you what the snorkel looks like so let's take a look at our hack job up here so there you go is it good no is it better than factory? Uh, yeah, I'd say that it is. It's uh, probably better than factory. So we made our little plate right there. We've attached it with a little bit of silicone. I also used some very short self-tapping screws just to give it a little bit better seal. And then we just went over all of its crud and stuff in here just with some matte black paint. It looks gloss because it's still a little wet. But anyway, I think that's enough time spent on just kind of the few things that I've done today. Let's go ahead and I will get the snorkel assembled and then I will show you guys what it looks like. So the first piece we're going to mount is the actual snorkel tube. We don't have the pre-filter on top right now because it has to be off of there for the cowl to go on and off. We're going to mount this one first because this one doesn't have a lot of play in it. You see our little L bracket we've made. There is also a rib nut right here and so it's going to sit on there and it attaches to that rib nut and that along with our other mounts and other things that we have here hold it in place pretty securely. So I'm going to throw that on then we'll move on to our straight pipe our 90 degree coupler then we have our intake canister that fits between that coupler and the mass sensor okay so i finally got all of that put back together and sun went down it's dark and i'm really tired but i'll show you real quickly what we've done and what it looks like now that it's installed here's what it looks like with the cowl and everything off like i said i got to put the windshield wipers back on and the cowl and all of that but as you can see here it's a really simple setup we have this 90 degree coupler coming off the throttle body into the straight pipe with that 60 degree hump to get it over the coolant hoses moving down we have our math sensor and then our specter air filter this is just a canister air filter from specter that i got on amazon i saw a bunch of guys with the v8s leaving reviews that they've used these before and they've worked fine there's also lots of other guys with v6s and other exploring rigs that they're using to build snorkel kits out of these and so hopefully it works out it seems like it's working out really good so far moving on we have this second 90 degree elbow into our straight pipe with our bracket and finally we have the snorkel intake tube with the bracket that we have here and so all in all it's a really really simple setup anybody could do this anybody at home watching this could probably do a better job than i did but this is what makes sense to me but anyway i'm going to put the cowl back on this i'm going to get the pre-filter put on top of this and then we'll go over all of it again out in the daytime we'll get some beauty clips and i'll let y'all know my overall impressions of the snorkel kit